How do you teach a five-year-old to play the harmonica? Well, at my kindergarten, we use a big poster on the wall that looks something like this. And the teacher points to a, a square and says, Do, Re, Mi. There's got to be a better way. So, I came up with this. The classroom music teaching aid. Something to help kids learn how to play the harmonica. Let's turn it on and see what happens. So I liked this project a lot because it started with a really focused problem. And so, you know, sometimes you have a project and it's sort of trying to solve everything all at once, but this is a really focused problem and therefore you can have a really focused solution that really solves it really well. So in this project, the creator uh, made a music teaching machine that solves a problem that's pretty common, right? Like how do you explain to someone how to play a music instrument? other than just by random trial and error making sounds with the instrument, this would give the student instant feedback of how they're, what, what note they're playing. You can have one display that reminds the, the kid that the note that they're playing is the same one that uh, the teacher was playing. Or if they're different, lets them see what the difference is. Um, and I, I, like, I like this sort of um, almost prosthetic synesthesia where you can have these devices that you know give you these extra connections between senses so if you maybe wouldn't quite have made that leap on your own but you can see that via the, the kind of technological prop then that can help you reach additional uh, leaps that maybe you would make after that. I'm Aaron Muna from Hungary and in this video I'm going to present you my new invention, the Ferrofit Core Differential Tilt Measurement Sensor. Which LVDT stands for Linear Variable Differential Transformer. And LVDT has three coils, two secondary and one primary. And the primary coil is usually excited with an alternating current. So depending on the movable ion course position, different voltages are being induced in the secondary coils. You would probably heard about what Ferrofit is. It's basically functioning like a liquid metal. So if we change an LVDT's iron core to a cell, half filled with ferrofluid, if we tilt or accelerate the sensor, the amount of ferrofluid in a secondary core is changing. It's really nice to see people developing brand new sensor technology. In fact, I don't think of all the um, uh, contest entries that I judged, I don't think I actually saw another sort of basic fundamental sensor tech like this before, which made it pretty unique. In addition to its actual design, and so, you know, this is a linear variable differential transformer that uses a liquid as its core instead of a piece of iron or something like that. It's really quite an ingenious idea. It's, it's simple and it's very effective in what it does. I thought that was so cool. Um, uh, for one thing, ferrofluids are awesome, but pretty useless for the most part. I mean, it's goopy and messy and gross, right? And hard to work with. And he's actually using it for something um, useful, <laughs> which is really cool. I liked watching the progress of the project that it, you know, they talked about why they were starting it and then went all the way through publishing the abstract for the paper that they have under review. So I really enjoyed that. This is Tito. It doesn't look like much, but when it links up with the rest of its pulse, things get a little bit more interesting. So I initially thought this is a, a robot that you can snap, snap the blocks together and out of it you build a little snake, but what I saw was it had all kinds of other potential locomotion methods that I hadn't even thought of. Crossing a little bridge, for example, or turning from a snake into a wheel. And these are really neat trying to figure out ways to get to places that robots otherwise can't. I really thought I could also follow along the set of build instructions and easily build one of these things. I can imagine going to meet up with mine and meeting up with people who have 20 others and we connect them together and make super robots. And, and the thing about Ditto that's so cool is number one, it's like not a multi-million dollar research lab that did it. And uh, two, uh, like just all of the, it's clear that they just run that robot all the time. You know, like the, the, the number of different things that those modules are doing in the videos, like they have them sliding down inclines, climbing upstairs, like detaching and reattaching or like figuring out how they can go up or down. And in, in our research group, when people make the robots, it's like, they're really excited when it works once and they make a video of it and then they write a paper about it and it's kind of over, you know? And, and this uh, Ditto robot, it seems like they're just kind of like goofing off and trying to figure out and learn 
how to do different things with the robot.